Hi, welcome back to the Busy Corner. I'm going to show you today in this video how to make a very simple uh, open hoop knitting tool uh, just using a coat hanger and how to add tips to your existing open hoop knitter if you already have one. Because I'm going to show you a way of doing knitting on this using a crochet hook rather than your fingers. And so if you do not have one of these already and and uh, you don't have the tubing or the wire, that's you know an earlier video I did, I'm not even sure what number it is now. If you don't have one of these, you can make one easily out of a coat hanger. And I mean a plastic coat hanger, not the simple clothes hanger. The clothes hangers are thinner. This will this is about the size between an 11 and 13 US knitting needle. And the coat hanger type is equivalent, it's two millimeters more than a US 15 needle. And so what I did to experiment with these is I cut it right before the loop and on the opposite side. So each, each side was eight inches long and you can cut it with a hacksaw or a plastic tubing cutter or even a cutoff wheel as long as it's deep enough on your Dremel tool. If you don't have one of these, I love these things, I have two of them. And when you get it cut, it might be a little rough. And in fact, this tubing is actually hollow that they make these coat hangers out of. And you can maybe see in the end of this that the side farthest away from the hook is, you know, hollow and up towards the hook. I think they get a little, squeeze a little more plastic in there. It may not be perfectly smooth. Smooth. Uh, sometimes it's ridged to the surface of the hanger. It doesn't matter if it's bumpy. It matters if it's rough. So you want to make sure that if there's any burrs in the plastic, you just take it out with, get a, one of these sanding sponges. These are available in the paint department at the hardware store and just make sure it's smooth. Now, if you want to at the ends, I angled the tips a little bit. Now, they don't match because this end is the one that's hollow. But you can use your sanding drum if you want to, if you want to go faster on your Dremel tool and just shape that a little bit. Now, it's going to be rough and you want to make sure you get all the burrs off with, like I say, a sanding sponge or some sandpaper. And then once you do that, it will be a little easier for you to manipulate, manipulate the yarn onto the, the knitting tool. Now, once you've cut your pipe, obviously your coat hanger, it's going to be in this shape because you're going to cut it here and here. And what you want to do then is squeeze those two together, the sides together, once you've cut it, and you want to put that down. I just used hot tap water until it got good and soft. And then I brought the tips together and I rubber banded them together. And when I'm not knitting on this, you can see here I have one in progress. So it's going to make something that's more like a tuning fork. And when I'm not knitting, I just close the tips together because I found that if I let it sit several days, you know, it wants to open up. You know, there's, it's not, I wouldn't say it has a memory the way PEX tubing does. But it may eventually open up. So when I'm not using it, or I've even in process, and I put it down, I just put a rubber band around the end. Now you notice that this is flat across these tips because I didn't shape that. And I found it's a little faster, again, if you shape it into uh, a point. Now I actually made these points for my, this is my other one that's made out of the polyethylene tubing. And if you've made your knitting hoop like mine, you've plugged the ends with either hot milk glue or a wooden bead, or if you bought it from me, I plugged them with quarter inch dowel rod. Now, you can easily glue wood to wood. So if you want to make points for your US 15, this is the size equivalent, these orange ones, all you need to do is to take a get a very cheap dowel rod, one that's made of pine, and you can get them at Walmart or the hobby stores. If you get this at the home center, you know, like Home Depot or Lowe's, it's going to be poplar and it's a little harder to cut. 
Now, most people don't have a pencil sharpener that will hold a 3 8 inch dowel rod. That's the size you need. And you can buy a pencil sharpener like this. It's meant for those flat carpenter's pencils. But your dowel rod will fit in that opening. And what you want to do is you want to cut it, you know, make your point first. Don't cut it first. And make your point with your pencil sharpener. And these things are really cheap. They're like a dollar. This is made by Cobalt. And it'll be, you go into the hardware area where they have the drill bits and hammers and all that jazz. And that's where you'll find these. Are, sometimes they're in a bin at the checkout even. So now just sharpen your dowel rod. And it doesn't have to be terribly sharp. If it's too pointy, if you're familiar with knitting needles, if it's too pointy, that is actually good enough. I had to kind of soften my tip a little bit. If it's too pointy and sharp, you'll actually pierce the yarn. You don't want to do that as you're knitting with it. So now I've sharpened my dowel rod a little bit. Now the key to getting this on here right is you need to make a very straight cut then back on the shaft. You don't want to cut where you have made your point, which is here. And I'll just put the pencil on there. Okay, so if you need to, just sh shade that a little bit so you know you need to make your cut back in here a bit or it won't match the size of the tubing. Now, and you want to cut that off straight. Now, if you're very careful, you can do it with your cutoff wheel, but you need to be straight and not bouncing back and forth. Or you can run it through your table saw. You just want to cut off, make sure you're cutting back into the shaft. Then I just used... Since, again, it's plugged with wood inside, I used a small dollop of Super Bonder Hot Melt Glue on the little wooden plug, and then I put my tip on and make sure it's all lined up. Now, if your plastic tubing is uneven, or if the wood is uneven, you're going to have a gap in there that will want to catch your yarn. It'll be a pain in the butt. So... You can either fill that gap with thread, or if you hold it on there first and you say to yourself, no, that's not going to, there's going to be a gap in there, you can use a little more hot melt glue than you normally would and squish it on there real hard and let the hot melt glue fill that gap and then you can shave it off later. And in a pinch, if you've made a mistake and it's still, you know, you can always use Teflon tape to fill any rough spot on a knitting needle and it stays pretty darn well around the needle itself and you know if you had to fill your gap but you know I made these in like 10 minutes it's not a hard project you know just wrap your Teflon tape around there and it looks bumpy but it sticks to itself and it's very smooth and slick and you you can make several scarves without even replacing this tape once you've kind of pressed it on there it stays really well it's not really tape it's it's Teflon I don't know how else to describe it. It's not sticky, but it clings. I guess that's the way. It's like saran wrap, but anyway. And it's non-toxic. It won't hurt you. So anyway, put that around if you have any problems. Now, once you have your tip glued on there, you've got to make that super, super smooth. So you need about a 400 grit sandpaper to rub that all out. And I actually put these tips on while I was knitting this. I had already started the scarf and I said, eh, this is kind of a pain. I'm going to see if I can't make tips for this. So, you know, I had to be careful not to get sawdust in my scarf, but the point is it's easy to do. So, that is how you do that. Now, the reason is because when you make your stitches, you're going to be bringing the new stitches over with your crochet hook. And it's a little easier to put it on a curved surface. If you don't want to do that, you can even look in the hardware. Well, it's over where the screws and bolts and things. And they have all these drawers of furniture parts. And look for a cap. Now, this is a little rubbery, but it would work if you waxed it. This came off of a, you know, like one of those spikes you can put in your yard that's on the end of a fence post. A lot of times you buy some. I save all those because... But this is a rubbery one, and it will fit on your doodah. Just to round it off a little bit, it makes it easier. You can just put it on. You see? kind of rounds off the tip. 
You could do something like that. So that's that, how you can make a quick little, whoops. And like I say, when you're done with it and when you're not using it, put a rubber band around it, but it works just fine and it's easy to hold. We're not gonna do this between our legs. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to knit on this without holding it down between your legs using a crochet hook to make a very cute stash buster scarf and with Willie's yarn. So thanks for watching and watch the next video to make your scarf.